Give him a point. Thank you, Jesus. Well, good morning, church. Oh, that was way better than the early crowd. Yeah, that was good. They're ready. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Online family, how you doing? So glad to be here this morning. Hey, look at your neighbor and let them know they're in the realm of glory this morning. Yeah, come on, Jamie, John Kelly, come on. We're in the glory realm this morning. Susan, Mark, we're in the glory realm this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Lord. We're going to have an awesome day today. We're going to have an awesome day today. Father, we just thank you for this time together. Uh, You know, uh, Patricia, first of all, let me just say this. Patricia's back. Yay! Uh, When you were away, the kids played. But you're back now, so now we got to get serious. We had a good time. Uh, But so glad that you're back. Glad to hear all the reports from the boat. And I I just think this. Anytime you go on a boat, you will meet Jesus. I just want you to live with that. Just live with that. Just know that whenever you go on the boat, Jesus will meet you there. So that was, uh, that was really great to, to hear all the reports and everything back. But here we are, Shiloh family, a day where our family comes together to worship God. Our church family comes together to worship God. So we do have a, a guest speaker this morning, and Patricia will introduce him later. Char- Prophet Charlie Robinson is here in the house this morning. We had an awesome time in the first service with him, so you know. You know, I mean, it is, it, is, it is primed. We are primed and ready to go. We're going to have a great time. Get ready to receive from the Lord. Here's what's on my heart this morning as we begin. I know, I was, I was going to go somewhere. But just, here's what's, on, here's what's on, my, on my heart and my mind. Every tongue and every tribe and every nation will declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. Oh, man. Do you know that our online family is watching? It spreads the globe. I mean, we are, we are in the house today. We are choosing as a church and as a people to say that Jesus Christ is Lord. And when you begin to lift your voice and when you begin to sing, there begins, it's like, it's like a take up your mat and walk moment. I mean, the glory of God will just come right in and things will begin to change in your life. Things that you have desired to change for so long are changing now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're gonna step into an awesome time of worship. Listen up. Uh, I think over here behind this camera, it's kind of hiding over there, but on this side and on this side of the stage, we have communion. Let us receive communion with the Lord this morning. Let us take his body. Let us take from his blood. Let us receive from the Lord this morning and and be in communion with him as we enter into praise and worship. Let this not be just another service. Let this not just be a moment where we just come in and just sing a song, hear a good message and walk out. No, you're not the same. It's too late. You walked into the building. It's too late. You're logged on. It's too late. You're going to be transformed. You're going to be renewed because the Holy Spirit is here. Listen, there's a freedom to dance. There's a freedom to sing. There's a freedom to praise. Are you ready, church? Are you ready? So I want to invite you to begin to lift your praise. Come and take communion. Begin to lift your praise. And let's go there. Let's go into the glory realm. Let's go as far as we can this morning. And let's worship Jesus. Brother Mark, thank you for leading us this morning. Let's go, brother. Let's just start by lifting our hands and let's just begin to pray. I just want to encourage you to begin to pray. We talk about prayer. God's moving us into prayer. So let's just begin by doing that. And even now, just begin to pray out in the spirit. If you pray in the spirit, begin to pray in the spirit. Just pray out loud.
just begin to pour out your praise. Jesus! 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 All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. As I do this next song, um, I want to share this earlier yesterday, but there was a time um, years ago where my wife and I, we had two little kids at the time, and through a series of circumstances, we were literally facing foreclosure um, in our home, and it was on a Friday afternoon, and we literally were going to get foreclosed on on a Tuesday, and so we were just kind of like, Lord, so the Lord showed us to put our bills on the floor. And we took our kids, our little kids, they were so little, and we just began to put on worship and we danced on top of the bills. And that afternoon, this guy came who we didn't know, came and literally stopped the foreclosure. And long story short, we sold the house, made money on the house, which was a miracle in itself. And then a year later, the Lord gave us basically our dream home. Um, um, through my parents, through, through my wife's parents, and we eventually bought the house from them. But it was just an amazing turnaround. But this is what the Lord spoke to me then. He said, the, the word of the Lord is true, no matter your circumstances. So sometimes your circumstances don't line up exactly, but his word is true. And if you hold on to his word, um, eventually you'll see the fruit of that. And so I feel like as even as I do this song, I'm coming from Fort Worth, I feel like part of what I'm to deposit here is I feel like there's people here, really, all of you really, at some level, um, I want to encourage you, there's something you might need to dance on top of or dance before the Lord for. And I want to encourage you as we do this to, to do something um, as a prophetic act, just like as we danced on our bills and God did a miracle for us. Um, you do an act, whatever that is for you, a prophetic act, and I feel like God is going to shift something in your life today. So. Let's get wild in the spirit. More undignified than this. Give all praises to Jesus. He is everything. He's everything. He's everything. He's everything. He's everything we need. Let's get wild in the spirit. Let's get wild in the spirit. More undignified. 
Yeah, let's just lift our voices to him. Yes, Lord. Yeah.
get ready Get ready For what I'm gonna do You don't have any idea For it is new It's new It's new It's new Get ready The Lord says get ready Are you ready? Get ready Get ready Are you ready? Are you ready? It's new for the new It's new It's new Old won't get you there It's ready Will you take the step of faith even if you don't know Will you say yes Before I ask Will you say yes Before I ask Even if you don't know What it'll look like But I will be there Shining in glory, I will be there, says the Lord. For I'm taking disappointments and I'm making appointments. I'm taking disappointments of the past and I'm making appointments now sign up sign up sign up sign up it'll cost you everything but it's worth everything sign Lord, I say, sign me up. Sign me up. I will clear all my schedule. Sign me up. Whatever it takes.
Somok. I'm just going to clear this over us. I have received now a danger.
say yes to your invitation, Lord God. And I hear the Lord saying, come up here. Come up here that I might show you things to come. And it was just a few nights ago I had a dream. It was a significant dream. It was a spiritual dream calling us to pray for revival, for the Lord's Spirit to come and bring life, to bring us out of the natural, to bring us out of natural thinking, to bring us out of earthly confinements and put us up into a place where we see things as they are from God's perspective. And he says, pray. Pray for revival. Pray for that, that life to come back in. And this morning as I was out on a prayer walk, I was I was just crying out to God and saying, Lord, revive me afresh. Bring me up into that fresh place in you. Revive me afresh. And all of a sudden, I found myself praying on levels where I was literally in the heavenly realm, praying down into the earth, His righteousness, His glory. But it wasn't just focused on the earthly needs. Like, you know, Lord, we pray for this need or that need or the other need. It was like praying for His will to be done in the earth. It was calling forth His agenda to be brought down in the earth. And the Lord says, I'm looking for those who will stand in my presence, who will stand in my strategy room and receive insight from me and pray it forth as rain down into the earth. Because there is something so big coming. There is something so big coming. And the Lord says, do not set your mind on the things of the earth. Do not look at all the turmoil. Do not look at all the things that are out of alignment, but look unto me and arise into this place and make decrees from the heavens down into the earth and you will see, you will see my kingdom come. And I just believe that even right now, many of you are being lifted up by the Spirit, lifted up in your spirit to see from heavenly perspective. And I'm getting Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. It says, set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. Set your mind on the things above. And I literally see the Spirit lifting you up into that place. Oh, I feel the glory. I feel the glory in the room right now. The Lord says, I'm giving you an invitation because there are, revival is coming that will bring transformation. Revival that is coming that will bring awakening. And I'm going to open the heavens and pour out rain upon my people that they might be raised up powerful in this day. But he says, I need those who will say, I will pray. I need those who will pray from a heavenly perspective. And if that's you, just shout out, I will. I will. Here I am, Lord. Send me, Lord. Woo! Lord, we mean that. We mean that. We, 
We want to serve you, and we want to serve your purposes, and we're excited about what's coming into the earth. Oh, there's a rumbling. The Lord says there's a rumbling in heaven that is going to be poured out in the earth, nation upon nation upon nation. And he says, any of you can be involved if you want, but the key is prayer. The key is to be in prayer. Because he's looking for those who will birth it. There will be those who will enjoy what is birth. But he's looking right now for a birthing chamber. And he says, do I have one within your heart? Whoa. And we just say, yes, Lord. We love you this morning. And we ask, Lord, that you would breathe upon us afresh. Let the breath of revival, Lord, just breathe on us from your heart this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just lift up our voices in prayer right now and cry out to the Lord for an outpouring of a spirit. All of you online, lift up your voices right now. Let's become a birthing chamber for the Lord. Oh, revival, come forth. Oh, Lord, rain down righteousness upon the earth. Let the power of your righteousness arise. Let it be poured out as rain in the earth and let it arise from the earth. Lord, let it fill, fill heaven and earth. Let your mercy and your love fill the atmosphere of the earth that we live in. Let your purity, let your holiness rule and reign. Let your power come, Lord. Let your power come and manifest. May your glory be fully manifest in the earth. May the earth be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, release your angelic majesties to serve your purposes, Lord. We call them forth in Jesus' name. I see something coming that is absolutely unstoppable and nothing will be able to resist it. And Lord, we say yes to that. We say amen. We say so be it. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Woo. You can turn to your neighbor and say, I can say amen to that. <laughs> oh, we so long for the kingdom of heaven to manifest in the earth. And we get wave after wave after in our life, but a big tsunami is coming. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of it. I said to the Lord years ago, as a young Christian, I said, God, I want to be wherever you are. That's where I want to be. And if you're moving, I want to be with you. I don't want to catch up 20 years later. I don't want to have a move miss me. And I think, what move? Because I didn't move, right? I want to be right in the center of every move. And, um, and praise the Lord, we've seen so many moves, even in our lifetime, that we've been a part of, and it's just been so amazing, each and every one. But there's something coming that is going to trump them all. It's going to be amazing. But we have to contend for it. We have to pray for it. We have to give birth to it. That is the condition on it. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to announce a baby announcement. Yay, my new book is out, Accessing the Riches of Heaven. I'm so excited about this book. Um, a number of years ago, I had a 30-day visitation with the Holy Spirit as he revealed to me how to access the riches of glory and how to ascend and descend and to understand the invisible realm. And, and out of that visitation came the glory school. And, but I've never put into print um, a lot of the uh, principles that God uh, showed as far as putting it into a book in that way. So this book has a lot of the insights that I received during that visitation, Accessing the Riches of Heaven. It's a great book, not only for your personal study, but if you wanted to get together with Bible studies, it's got, um, at the end of every chapter, it's got a summary, it's got questions to ponder, it's got declarations. So it, it's just great for group discussion and that as well. 
well. But I'm really excited. And for those of you on our online family around the world, uh, you can order it on our uh, site. Um, uh, this is the pre-order right now. It's not actually in the bookstores quite yet. Uh, they get in the bookstores, I think it's in June the 1st, uh, but it will be on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and, and uh, uh, uh you know, you can access it there. But right now, we have it on sale uh, for uh, this uh, month as an introductory off offer. I think it's regular 16 or $17. is on sale for $12. And we're not going to have the uh, resource table opened up after this meeting. But tonight, before experience begins and after, we'll have it. And I'll be there to sign books tonight as well, if any of you want those. Pick them up for friends and that. And also, uh, Mother's Day is coming. We are? Oh, we are. Okay, because I just talked to Jonathan before the service, and he said no. Oh, he opened it. Okay. Well, if it's out there, go pick it up. <laughs> or wait for tonight. And then this is 31 Decrees of Blessing for Women. And this makes a great Mother's Day gift. And we actually have a whole uh, package uh, that includes a number of resources that's on sale. But this, um, you know, if you're looking for something to give to a woman in your life that you really love and appreciate and want to honor, this is a great gift. It's a devotional where every day uh, you can uh, read a devotion and meditate on a devotion that points to one of the blessings that you have been given by God through covenant. And then there's also um, uh, 10 decrees for that particular blessing for that day in each day. And it's just a, a, a great little tool. And I'm really excited because just this week I received an invitation from an organization to do a podcast with them. And that organization reaches out to a lot of the seeker-friendly um, uh, churches in that. And so it's a whole new demographic to be able to share the goodness of God with. So I'm really excited about that. And also, this is another one of our brand new books that's just come out over the last couple of weeks or so. It's called Blessed to Bless. This is on the benefactor anointing. I've been carrying this word um, since uh, last fall. And uh, the Lord told me to put it into book form because if you can read it over and over again and get it inside of you, it'll start to manifest because the word becomes flesh, right? It becomes um, a part of you. It becomes your own revelation. When it becomes your own revelation, it'll start to manifest. So, and, and these two, I think they look really beautiful together. If you wanted to pair them up, I mean, come on, I'm a woman. I, you know, I just look at those things. And also we have um, on the book table, we have Brian Simmons' Passion Translations. And just saying, there's one in purple. <laughs> Anyways, what a day this is. How many of you know that it's experience tonight at 6 o'clock p.m.? Come early. How many of you are planning on coming out? Put up your hands and make sure you bring friends with you. Get on your uh, Facebook and your social media this afternoon. Let them know that they can come into the studio. It's going to be power packed. We're going to have a glory blowout service tonight with Katie Sousa, Charlie Robinson, Mark Snyder, our worship team. I mean, it's just going to be amazing. We are expecting miracles. We've been praying into it. It's going to be a revival outpouring, and we're really looking forward to tonight, so you won't want to miss it, and it's also going to be live streamed, so all of you who are on our online family, of course, it'll be live streamed for you, so fill your living rooms up and have a revival party in your own home, because we want, we want you to experience everything good in God, amen, and there's so much of God to explore, so that's at 6 o'clock p.m. tonight. If you're watching online, it, it's... Um, uh, six o'clock Pacific time, because in Arizona here, we don't do the daylight saving time. We just stay the same all year. So half the year, we're the same as California, and the other half, we're the, the same as, as Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I, I want to receive our morning tithes and offerings, and what an honor, right, to be able to lavish God as part of our worship with the very first and the best of everything that he has given us. And in Shiloh, this is a massive value, a foundational value in our church that we honor God with the first and the best. And so every Sunday, we give you opportunity to do that. But this morning, as I was praying into the service, because of the dream God gave me, it was just like this impacting dream about praying for revival. It was like this urgency in the heart of God. He said, don't stay where you are. Pray for revival, and I will give you revival. Just get back into that place where, because I've got another wave to bring upon you, and you can't be stuck in the natural. But as I was praying into that this morning, one of the things that the Lord showed me is that... Um, 
that you can actually sow into revival. If you sow into the heavens, the heavens will pour out onto the earth. And through your tithes and offerings, there's actually in the word, in Malachi, it says that when you bring the tithes into the storehouse, he said, test me in this. Will I not open up the heavens for you and pour out a blessing that you cannot contain? That's revival. When heaven opens and pours out upon you, that's revival. So you can actually, with your tithes and your offerings, you're actually positioning yourself for, for just perpetual revival. And just receive that by faith this morning. But the other thing is when revival comes, there's always abundance that comes with revival. Whenever revival historically comes out, there's abundance, there's prosperity that comes upon the people of God. It just comes with revival. And so we are created to live in abundance. We're not created to live in lack. We're created for abundance. That is God's standard, not ours. It's his way, not ours. It's his way. And so we want his way. And so as we're giving this morning, let's sow into revival. We'll sow into personal revival, sow into revival for our children, sow into revival for the region that we're living in, so into revival for the church, because we want to see heaven open and God pour out a blessing that we cannot contain. Amen? So if you're making out checks, make them payable to Shiloh. And if you're watching online, you can actually give online. We also have an app. You'll see all the information on your screen. Uh, you can also text uh, the word SEED to the number 73256. And uh, that, those are all secure ways of giving. And uh, your giving, of course, will be receipted for those of you that need receipts for your uh, taxes. Uh, uh, next year, you'll be able to uh, use that and so that you can have benefit. Isn't that neat that we live in a nation where the government gives you benefit? I don't know about you, but I would give if there is benefit or not from the government because I know God's law and the way it works, you know. But if the government is going to bless me back for giving to the Lord, then I think they're positioning themselves to be blessed. Amen? So I'm going to bless the government for giving me that option. But whether they give it to me or not, I'm still going to be blessed by giving the Lord the first and the best. So Father, we pray over our offering right now and over our tithes. And we ask, Lord God, that you would bless, bless um, that, that which we give to you today to expand your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, that there's meat in the house. There's meat in the house and that the heavens are open over this house and everyone in it. And we ask for your blessing on those who are giving and, Lord, on the offering itself. Multiply it back in abundance, 30, 60, 100, even a thousandfold increase in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Our ushers are going to receive um, the offering. They'll serve you in that way. Don't you love our ushers? Aren't they awesome? Let's give the Lord a big praise for, for all the team that ministers um, every single week to you and make it wonderful for you. So we're so appreciative of all those who are serving and ministering to the people of God. Well, it is my honor right now to introduce a great friend of mine. Um, Charlie and Shirley Robinson are in the house, and we're so glad to have them with us. Um, when we lived up in Canada, um, they were great friends. We partnered uh, with the Lord together for revival and outpourings of the Spirit, saw God do great things. And um, we've known each other for about 33 years because her son Samuel was uh, just born when when I met them. And so that's a long time. And now their son Samuel is a real revivalist going around all over the world, making impact on so many people's lives. It's just wonderful to see the generations grow up. You know, you stay in the kingdom long enough and you see all the little babies grow up to be, you know, great men and women of God. And we've got a house full of awesome children right in this house here who are going to be raised up to do great exploits for God. But um, Charlie's a revivalist and he's a seer prophet. Um, he sees in the spirit and he and he um, uh, speaks out what the Lord shows him. And so he's got fresh uh, prophetic vision for us this morning. So we want to welcome uh, Charlie Robinson. Come on forward. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Sunday morning. Hallelujah. 
Amen. How many are, are ready to meet God in a fresh way this morning? Uh, whether you're here, whether you're watching online, and and in worship earlier this morning, uh, God gave me a word for the church. And and if you don't go to this church, you can assimilate this word as well. If you're watching, I want you to receive this word. And uh, I know that the name of the church is Shiloh, uh, but the Lord spoke to me that that this the church. I saw the name over the church, Church of the Seers, and I believe that God wants to open up the eyes of his people to be able to see, and to be able to see specifically, not just generally, to be able to see specifically what God is doing and what he's about to do. This is a season where God is about to anoint the eyes of his church that we might see. So get ready to see. That's my word this morning. Get ready to see. Do you know that Moses did not say, Lord, tell me about your glory. He said, Lord, show me your glory. Not tell me about your glory. Show me your glory. Do you know that Jesus, John, and Paul said word for word the same thing? We testify of those things which we both seen and heard, not just heard. And in this season, there is an anointing to pray. There is an, like Patricia was saying, and I believe in her dream, that that dream is not only representative of praying for revival, it will actually carry revival. That in this season of prayer, there will be a scene anointing to know how to pray, what to pray for, where to pray for, and that God is going to open our eyes so that we know how to pray, that we pray accurately, that we'll be able to see what God is doing in this season. That's for you in the building, but also for you that are watching online. That God wants to release a seer anointing that there is an oil, that there is an anointing to be able to see. Let's go to Habakkuk 2, verse 1, and, uh, and that's what I felt. This isn't, uh, well, it connects completely with the, with the message, but Habakkuk 2, verse 1 says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. It didn't say, and listen to what he's going to say. Obviously, we hear, but there is a scene. Watch to see what he will say. Isn't that awesome? God wants to see, wants us to see what he is saying and what I will answer when I am corrected. In other words, God wants us to see what he is saying. And there's an anointing even in the room today. Jesus anointed the eyes of the blind man in John chapter 9. He anointed his eyes. He went out and washed. And what happened? He saw. And I believe that. How many want to see today? How many here watching on? How many want to see? I want to see. You know, the Bible says we prophesy in part, we know in part, and we see through a glass dimly, but I want to see a little more clear today. And I don't only want to see the issues at hand or the prayers that I I need to pray or the answers of my prayer. I don't just want to see that. I want to see what God is doing here and around the world. And I believe that today, even in this message, that there is an oil that is going to come upon the people of God and that God is going to anoint us from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. That's what it says in Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when the brethren dwell in unity. It said it is like the oil, the precious oil that comes on the head down the beard, and down the garment, right to the edge. And that's the kind of oil that we're looking for. I believe in this season, that precious oil, that kingly oil, is about to come on the body of Christ. But first of all, I believe that God wants to open our eyes that we can see. It also says in John chapter 9, after the blind man was healed and he came to Jesus and he worshiped him, Jesus said, this is what I came for, to open the eyes of the blind and to blind those that see. You know what that means? He wants to open your eyes. When the body of Christ says, Lord, open our eyes, he will blind the eyes of the enemy. All the witchcraft, new age, all that stuff that sees and that shouldn't see, God will blind them. He'll poke them in the eye with a stick. I literally saw that this morning when we were praying. I saw the Lord, I saw this single eye over this state, and I saw God poke the eyes that couldn't see anymore. So whatever that is, praise God. because It's Bible that Jesus will open your eyes, hallelujah, and he'll blind the eyes of the enemy. How, about, how many would say it's time? It's time. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. That's your word. Glory to God. I want to get in the oils today. And you know what? Um, and it is a metaphor, but it's actually a reality as well in the spirit. I had a dream this morning. Patricia come and knocked on the door. I actually woke up out of a dream. And um, in my dream, I was with friends, some of my closest friends. 
And I was commending them that they were receiving the concept of oil in the spirit, even though they didn't understand it all. They were so hungry for the things of God. You know, the things of God, you can't, uh, you know, you, your mind actually can't comprehend all of it. God will give you the understanding through a spirit of wisdom and revelation. But God uses things like oil, wind, fire, water. How many like all that stuff? I love all that stuff. That's the way God builds. See, man builds with wood. He builds with cement blocks. He, he paints stuff. But God builds with fire, wind, Acts 2. Suddenly there was a sound of rushing mighty wind. Amen? And then fire came on. The, you can't, man can't control that stuff. Jesus said, those that are led by the Spirit, I like the what? Wind. You don't know where they're coming from or where they're going. Hallelujah. Praise God. But if you will embrace what God is doing, It'll be better than what you thought it would be. Hallelujah. So, amen. Praise God. How many can say amen to that? Amen. How many are excited? Uh, I mean excited. You know, excitement is a good thing. You know, lethargy is a horrible thing. You know, lukewarmness is terrible. I want to be on fire. I, don't want, I, I want to be on fire. Level 11 fire. I mean, maybe, the, maybe the gauge goes to 10. Let's go to 11. Amen. That's the kind of zeal that I want to have. I want to have a burning zeal that everywhere I go, the fire of God is with me. And, that, and that, that's where it says, arise, shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen on you. That's the kind of fire people can watch you burn and say, well, who's this burning guy or burning woman? They get, come and watch you burn and the glory of God, you know, it'll come on them. Amen. So my wife has written several books. Shirley, why don't you raise your hand? This is my wonderful wife, Shirley. We've been married. We'll be 38 years next month. She's an amazing woman of God. She has a real apostolic anointing. She has two foundations, one in the States, one in Canada. She visits a woman's prison when she's at home every Tuesday night. Uh, and it's amazing, ministers to, to women in prison, ministers to all sorts of people in all sorts of conditions. And uh, she's written actually three books. This is her first published book. She's about to publish her next one in a couple of weeks. And it's called Spirit Led parenting. And if you've ever met my son or ever seen my son minister, my, we have a great, great son. Wouldn't you say, I mean, an amazing, I know he's my son, but he's an amazing son that by the grace of God, Shirley says, yes. No, by the grace of God, really. And we don't take it for granted either because the devil's a bad devil. You never take your foot off the gas. You pray for your children as long as you're on this earth, and you believe God for the best, and you believe for everything. Don't believe for half. You know, Paul didn't say, I know when I come unto you, I'll come with half the gospel. You know what Paul said? I know that when I come unto you, I will come in the fullness of the gospel of Christ. How many want to come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel? Not half the blessing. Amen. So this is a really good book. It's called Spirit led parenting. You know what you say? Well, my, my children are grown up. Well, buy some copies and give it to your children. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's a good shower gift. Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, the USB. How many know what a USB is? I mean, some, some people over 60 don't. I didn't know what it was for a while. I thought it was a bank. But anyway, this is a USB. It has 14 of my messages on here. And it is, uh, it's the, I call it the library of Charlie. But it's full of testimonies of what I've seen, not just what I've heard what I've seen and what God has done around the world. And I'm gonna share a couple of testimonies today because I believe that God wants to pour out the oil and the wine today here and those that are watching and all over the world. We're in a season, there's something happening today in the spirit, I can tell you that. There's angels that have come here today that are on assignment, that it, it, right here, I'm talking about America, but that are on assignment to help bring revival worldwide. There's something very unusual this weekend, I can tell you that right now. And I am a revivalist, of, you know, for 36, years. Anyway, this is available for $40 in, in, uh, in the bookstore. But for 36 years, since 1983, when God moved us from British, uh, to British Columbia, God began to speak to me. For two years, God led me into fasting and praying in 1983 and 1984. He he, he led me into fasting and praying to seek God. And, 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 and I prayed one prayer. This is one prayer. In two years, I, I predominantly prayed one prayer. Oh, Lord, show me your glory. Oh, Lord, show me your glory. Oh, Lord, show me your glory. I wanted to see the glory of the Lord. I wanted to see the goodness of the Lord. And God would promise me Psalm 27, verse 13. And David said, uh, I would have fainted had I not believed that I would see how many want to see? David prayed that prayer. He said, Lord, I would have fainted not, had I not believed that I would see the goodness or the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. That's what God is saying today. He wants you to see it. Now, believe it, yes. But you know what he told Lazarus' sister? He said, did I not tell you if you would believe, you would see 
the glory of the Lord. It's all about seeing today. I know it's about seeing. I know it's about prayer. It's about a kind of prayer on the watchtower that we're about to see. Not the, not the micro, the macro. God is going to show us what he's about to do on the earth. Not only here, but in other nations. God is, some of you, God is anointing your feet right now. I, I can see it. He's anointing your feet. It says in Job 29, in the days when God anointed my feet with butter, in some versions say cream. Can you imagine being anointed with butter and cream? Hallelujah, butter and cream. And everyone else is walking on glass and you're anointed with butter and cream and cream and butter. And the next part of that verse, and the rock poured out rivers of oil for me. People are like, well, I'm in a stony, rocky place and it's really hard. Well, you know what? I might be in the same place, but the rock's pouring out rivers of oil for me. Rivers of oil for me. Well, I'm in the desert. Well, that's where the streams flow, in the desert. So have a drink, praise God. I like what Heidi Baker says. If I'm gonna be in the desert, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be in the desert drunk in the spirit. So yeah, one way or the other, right? You see, with God, you know, no good things come to an end. You know, it's a saying in the world, all good things come to an end. But to a Christian, no good things come to an end. Isn't that a, 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 awesome? Woo, praise God. I don't know about you. I'm just hanging on here. The glory of God. There's something going. I, there's going to be a shaking. God's about to shake everything that can be shaken so that which cannot be shaken will remain. You know what's going to remain? Revival. Yeah, revival. Religion's going to shake and the dust is, 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 is going to leave and then revival's coming. And the glory, Isaiah 60. And we're going to see. It says, it says when the glory comes on you, it says the Gentiles will see your light and they'll come to the rising of your light. Isn't that awesome? Hallelujah. Praise God. Can I get an American amen? amen? Hallelujah. How many know I'm from Canada? How many thought it was American? One person. Praise God. Hallelujah. My mother lives in Vermont. She's lived in Vermont for 50 years. So, Amen, brother and sister. No, um, amen. Well, you know what? Amen. That's sort of Canadian. I, 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 amen, eh? Yeah, amen, eh? Amen, eh? Yeah. You know, we graduated, Patricia, though. Since you've been in the States, we've graduated in Canada. We've been A at A, now we're at B. So we've moved ahead a little bit, so. <laughs> you know what? I just think you should... I, I, you know, honey, there's something's going on here. I can tell you it's the revival angels are here. When the revival angels are, show up, joy comes. The oil of joy. Do you know that Jesus was anointed? Jesus was anointed with joy beyond his companions. You know, God, and you always trade up in the kingdom. You get the oil of joy. How about the oil of joy for mourning? You trade up. You got mourning, you trade up to the oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You always trade up in the spirit. Isn't that awesome? Hallelujah. Woo, what's going on? I'm telling you, the angels are here. They're in the church. They're in the building. They're in the region. They're here to bring forth something. They're here, here to bring forth revival. I see the red carpet. It's going to welcome Jesus in, in, in a new and a fresh way that's coming. And the oil, God's going to open our eyes and we're going to see the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm prophesying today. I'm trying to say what I said earlier, but it's coming out different, but it's better. It's even another level. Hallelujah. Woo, praise God. And maybe you're not used to this. Just hang on. You know, it'll, it'll come to you. I, sometimes in meetings, I pray, Lord, just give them the, the uh, blockhead anointing because God wants to do something here. So I say, Lord, just let them hang on till they get it here because sometimes things are unusual, but sometimes unusual things are really good. Hallelujah. Pray. Nobody wants the same old, same old. Are you kidding me? Not even God. God doesn't look the same old. So he's consistent, but his mercies are what? Old every morning. No, they're new every morning. Isn't that awesome? His mercies are what? New every morning. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Religion makes you old. Jesus keeps you young. Hallelujah. I tell people I'm the oldest teenager in Canada, and I'm telling you, and I am. Though my outward man perish, my inward man is renewed day by day. Hallelujah. Are you glad you're here? I'm glad I'm here because I'm going to get something. God promised because I kept seeing American flags in a meeting. Uh, we had quite a large meeting, Grand Prairie, Alberta, Web North. And 
here we are ministering, Canadian oil, it's all about Canada and revival, and all I get is, is American flags for like every single day for four days. I close my 3D American flag, and God says, I'm gonna do something in America. I'm gonna do something in the United States. I'm gonna pour it out in the United States. It's gonna happen. Encourage them, encourage them, encourage them. Don't, you guys, don't grow weary. Don't grow weary because this is your hour. Don't grow weary because God's about to pour something out. Not only for you, for your sons and your daughters. You, know, you see, we need it, you guys. You need it in the States, we need it in Canada. But God, God is about to, he's already answered our prayer because revival's actually here. It's just hovering and looking for a place to land. I, you know, I said that when I was in Indonesia, I went to a church. God said, you're going to preach that message that, the, that revival's over the church, but it's looking for a place to land. They'd have every kind of speaker you can imagine in that church. Benny, Benny Hinn, I mean, RWs, they had everybody. And, and so, and here I come in, they're like, well, who are you? And I thought, and I, you know, so I'm like, all I had was this message that revival's hovering. And then I said, just like when the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus like a dove. And I said, it was like a bird waiting to land. The moment I said that a bird flew into the church and, fl- and this is a huge church and flew back, back and forth for an hour and a half. It was the most tiredest bird in all of Indonesia. The whole time I preached, it flew back and forth. And I, and I, I mean, it freaked me out. I mean, all these kids had their cell phones until the bird came in, then they put it away. And I'm like, we're looking for a place to land, just like this bird, he's getting tired. And I said, God ain't getting tired, but he's looking for a place to land. Who does he want to land on? You. You. You say, well, how does that work? Lord, here I am. Send me. Some people pray, Lord, here I am. Send Bob. No, not send Bob. Send me. <laughs> land on me. And if you don't understand the, the terminology, just get hungry and it'll all make sense. Amen. If you don't understand the terminology, you see, most people, they don't enter into revival because the package that revival comes in, but it always comes in an offendable package. It'll offend you in some way. I offend myself sometimes. I mean, I, I'm thinking that, man, if this is 25 years ago and I'm sitting there listening to me, I might walk out. Like, because, but, but so I keep drinking in the spirit. Revelation 22, verse 17, the spirit and the bride say, come, and here, and he, and he who's thirsty, let him come and take freely from the water of life. So if this offends you, drink heavily, hallelujah, from the river. Wow, Lord help me, he is, good. Well, Esther 2.12, yeah, let's go to Esther 2.12. I didn't go there earlier, but I'm gonna go there right now, quickly. And it's, because I felt the Lord say today, this service we're gonna marinate in the oils. How many wanna marinate in the oils? In the, oh, we're gonna marinate in the oils. You know, what, you know what marinate is? You know that the, the Greek word for um, baptism is baptismo, right? And, it's, and you know, one of the early, is, you probably know this, one of the earliest usages of the word baptismo is a pickle recipe from thousands of years ago. And basically, that's what it is. You marinate with God. You go in a cucumber, you come out a dill. <laughs> Do you notice that, that a dill pickle doesn't taste like a, a cucumber anymore? It tastes like the marination that is placed in. That's what God wants. You go in as you and you marinate in God. You marinate in his love. You marinate in his presence. And as you marinate in his presence, you begin to look and sound and smell like Jesus. You do. And you begin to bring that gospel. And there's an oil that comes on you, a fragrant oil. And you begin to release the fragrance of Jesus everywhere you go. And as you, that's what revival is, is releasing the fragrance of Jesus everywhere you go. Hallelujah. And even the kings get impressed. I'm not talking about Patricia. I'm talking about the kings, you know, the kings. Well, how do we know that? It says here, yeah, Esther 2, verse 12, each, uh, each uh, young woman's turn came to go into King uh, Ahasuerus. We never say that right anyway. I used to say, well, I got to say all the words right. I went to Israel. We, we, we say them all wrong anyway. So I, you just take a stab. It's good enough for God. After she had completed 12, unless you're Brian Simmons, who knows how to say everything right. I don't, but he does. He's amazing. Uh, uh, <laughs> You know what? I'm going to tell you something. I think about Brian, Brian Simpson. I get drunk in the spirit. I can't. He, it's there's something. The guy's mar- been marinating a long time. Yeah. Okay. So I got to move along. Uh, so good. Yes, sir. Here we are. So for thus were the days of their preparation uh, a portion. Six months with the oil of myrrh. Wow. Can you imagine six months with the oil of myrrh? How many want some oil of myrrh in the spirit? I'm talking to the spirit. But you see, this is applicable because oil is real. 
You can get inebriated with the oil and the wine and the things of God. Hallelujah. Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Woo! Praise God. God's going to marinate us tonight. God, t today and tonight, there's something coming tonight. I'll tell you, there's like the heavy oil is going to come. I mean, that anointing, that like myrrh, that heavy, uh, heavy oils are coming into this place. And I see the angels. There are angels that are coming this weekend. And they're surrounding the work of God and protecting the work of God. And they're going to birth a revival. Hallelujah. Because a revival is a baby. Did you know revival's a baby? And I actually had a dream a couple of years ago. Remember, honey? Strange dream. Because Shirley was having a baby. I mean, it's not strange, but she was having a baby in my dream. And I'm standing there, and I'm like, wow, she's having a baby. And then I realized it was her baby and our baby, but it wasn't my baby. But I was really happy. And I'm thinking, why am I so happy? And it's my wife's baby. And it's our baby, but not my baby. And God, and remember that, honey? And I woke up, I'm like, she, my wife had a baby. It was our baby and not my baby. I said, God, what do I do with that? He, go, he says, one, 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 one. 11, 11. I said, okay, 11, 11, what? He goes, no, page 1, 1, 1, 1. That's what God said to me. Page 1, 1, 1, 1 in my Bible is uh, Matthew chapter 1. And in Matthew chapter 1, you read about a man named Joseph, whose wife had a baby. It was her baby, their baby, but not his baby. It was her baby, their baby, but not his baby. But he was given charge over that baby. Got to name the baby. Was given the provision to take care of the baby. And I know what the baby was. It was revival. That God is about to give us a baby. Wow. He's given us a baby. It's our baby. But it's ultimately God's baby that we're going to be given in charge of. He will provide the finances and the funds. Very important. Finances and wealth in this hour for the purposes of taking care of the baby. Of How many believe that? You see, I'm telling you, God is going to give us a baby and then he's going to provide. You know, God gave Mary a baby and then brought in those three wise men. And you know what? They didn't have a little bottle of myrrh and a little chunk. Are you kidding me? They probably came with camels of stuff. If that offends you, you know, have another drink because that just wrecked your, you know, your Christmas thing. And anyway, good. Okay. Did I read that? Okay. The oils. Good. Okay, I want to share a testimony, uh, a couple of testimonies about prayer. Now, prayer in this season you know, some people, oh, I, I, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to pray, and, there, and there's breakthrough prayer. There's time to pray when you don't feel anything. It's, just, it's always time to pray. You pray without ceasing. However, in this season, God wants us to see. But not only that, I've learned this. If I'm praying for revival, I can have revival while I'm praying. In fact, if you begin to really, I mean really fervently begin to pray for revival, you'll begin to have revival as soon as you start praying fervently. It'll come on you. It will, 100%. When your heart turns toward God and you begin to pray, you begin to seek God, you begin to pray for revival. This is what happens to me every time. In fact, most of my testimonies come out of prayer, a time of fervent prayer. And during the fervent prayer, that anointing of revival comes on me before the revival comes. And I'm walking in revival. Before we saw revival, where Patricia and Shirley and I, we all live, before we saw it, we were experiencing it already because we were praying for it. And we were seeking God for it. We were praying corporately. We were praying individually. People were fasting. People were praying. We wanted to see the glory. But as we began to pray, it began to manifest. And so I learned years ago that as I prayed, I can enter into what God is doing right now. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it. I mean, you will have them. And I remember this one day, God said, I want you to pray for 10 to 11 every night till I tell you not to. 10 to 11. Strange time. You know, I thought, well, I'll do it. And so just do it. What were we saying today? We're signing up, even if we don't know what we're signing up for. I've said to God many times, I will go. And then thought, man, I didn't ask him why or where. <laughs> when you say yes, well, you said yes to everything. And so I'm praying. I said, I will pray. And I, I started, I like to walk when I pray. Enoch walked with God. And one day he was, not. so I like to walk with God. And I came right to this wall. And all of a sudden, I began to pray. My volume went up to 11. And I was like, shut up, and it was like oil came right over me. And this beautiful oil, it was like a waterfall of oil. And oil was coming over me, oil was coming up. And I was praying, shut up, and in tongues, because God told me to pray in tongues for an hour. So not in, in tongues, so I'm praying. Woo, it felt good. But I was right against the wall. It was odd because I was, it was like it was in Israel against the wall. I'm just praying. And I'm, but I was loud, like really loud. You know, when you have fervency, you'll be loud. You'll be loud. The guy that was blind wanted to get healed. He shouted out, son of David, have mercy on me. And when they told him to shut up, it says he, he, he said it louder. <laughs> 
He said it louder because he wanted him to hear. And God's not deaf, but God likes loud, you know, when you pray like that. Now, quiet's great, but loud's good sometimes. So I was praying loud, but my mind tried to talk me out of it because I'm standing against the wall. And I'm thinking, man, I'm standing against the wall. I mean, God's over here, over here. So I went over here because my mind said, well, yeah, God's everywhere. And I like to walk. Shut up about nothing. Shut up about nothing. So I went over here. Volume 11, the fire of God, the oil of God. Woo! And I did that a couple of times. My, my mind would kick in. I'd go over here. Man. I'm, I'm trying to teach you how to follow the Spirit and not your mind. Because your mind will talk you out of a lot of good things. But you see, the, the problem was, we lived in an apartment back then. So on the other side of this wall was somebody lived. And I was really loud, and it was 10 to 11 every night. 10 to 11, 10 to 11. Shada ba da ba da 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 Like I'm six inches from the wall. Now your mind is going to tell you to stop doing it or tone down. So will the devil. But in my spirit, no, I'm moving up louder. Shada ba da ba da 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 ba da da But I thought, you know, one day I might have a visitation from a police officer I didn't know or somebody. Right? <laughs> two, and a half, two and a half months I prayed that way. One hour in tongues, 10 to 11, two and a half months. Can you imagine? Sometimes, you know, a week or two won't do it. A week or two won't do it. But for, for some reason, I just kept right two and a half months later, knock on the door. It's the lady from over here. And we knew she had a 14-year-old daughter. I don't know if I'd ever even talked to her. I said hi to that lady at least once, and I think it was it. And that's all. They're very quiet, kept to themselves. And she, I opened the door. It's her. She says, can you come for lunch tomorrow? I'm like, yeah. And so I thought, wow, we're going for lunch tomorrow. She said, the lady next door? I said, yeah. So I actually literally went out in the hall and looked to see if there was a man with a hat and maybe a, a baton and a gun, and but there wasn't any police. I thought, you know, I'm going to get in trouble. You see, many times we think we're going to get in trouble for going out on the edge. Get rid of your dignity. I mean, when your dignity's gone, you don't care anymore. And so anyway, we went for lunch. And we, we were eating. They're very quiet, eh, honey? Really quiet people. And so we were eating, and they're eating, and we're eating. Not saying anything. And I thought, I'm going to talk about God. So I started talking about the Lord. I said, first of all, I said, do you mind if I talk about God? She said, that's why we invited you. <laughs> oh, that's why you invited me. So we talked about God, and we talked some more about God. And I said, would you like to receive Jesus? Shirley shared her testimony. They said, yeah. They received the Lord. They were crying. We were crying. They were, they were laughing. We were laughing. And then the, the 14-year-old daughter said, how many were not here this morning? <laughs> so most of you have heard this already, but probably not at home. And so they, the online, pardon me. And so uh, um, the, la- the, the 14 year old girl says to me, sir, I don't know you, but she says, um, for the last two and a half months, I've been very depressed. And the last month I've been very suicidal. And she said, it's everything that I could do to keep myself from killing myself for the last month. But she said at 10 o'clock, I would come and sit on the edge of my bed and I would wait for you to speak in that funny language on the other side of my wall. The only person in the world I probably wouldn't have bugged that night was her. And she said, when you would speak in that funny language, I'll tell you what happens when you ignore this and do this and do this and pray until God tells you not to and what happens to other people and what happens, what you're releasing, whether you knew it or not, I did not know for two and a half months what I was doing. I was being obedient to what I knew God wanted me to do, but my mind was not in agreement. I didn't care because it was all here and I knew it was God and it was right here. And she said, when you would speak in that funny language, something would come through the wall and knock all the depression off, and then something else would come through the wall and knock all the the, uh, suicide off, and I could live for another day. Now, this is what happens when you pray without ceasing. This is what happens when the oil comes. This is what happens when the glory comes. It's not only for you, it jumps on somebody else. That's the key. Freely you receive, freely you give. Can you imagine... I'm telling you, if your children are suicidal, start praying in tongues. Start seeking God. Don't give up. Don't stop. Start reading scriptures like Isaiah 60, that the ships of Tarsus will come first, bringing your sons and daughters from afar. And if they're not serving the Lord, go to Isaiah 60. It says they will come to you. Start praying. Start, this is your hour to start praying and start seeking and not stop and seek God. There's a grace to be able to pray through and see revival. And through, see, this is revival. When I'm telling you, this is revival. We saw this woman years later. We were in a store walking down the aisle, and here comes this woman around. I didn't recognize her. It was years later with two children, about 10 or 11. And it, it, was, that, it was that girl 
who was a girl, 14 year old. Now she's grown up. I didn't recognize her. She comes up to Shirley and says, your name's Shirley. And she says, yes. She said, I don't know your name, but I was in the, uh, in the aisle next to you and I recognized that voice. She said, I've heard that voice somewhere before. And she says, and I went, and, and she, I knew it was you. And she said, here's my son, Eli, I think it was Elijah and Elisha or Elijah and Ezekiel, that's her son. Can you imagine that God can do that? Can you imagine that there's an anointing that God is placing on us to pray in this season right now? Just like Patricia's dream, to bring forth revival, to bring forth a baby. And I'm telling you, it doesn't take long. Do you, people will say, well, it takes a while to pray, to, you know, to labor, to have a baby. Listen, before Zion uh, lay, uh, uh, travailed, she gave birth. What does that mean? When you start praying, you can give birth while you're praying. You can have revival as soon as you start, before you start. The moment you make up your mind, I want revival, God will give you revival. The moment you make up your mind, what we're singing today, we're singing about saying yes. Yeah, you know, before anything, we're just saying yes, and whatever happens after that, yes, hallelujah. What revival is what we want. But the yes means whatever it looks like, Lord. Oh, whatever it looks like. I want the whatever it looks like. I don't care what it looks like. You can be up here having the mic. I want to be in the room, however. That's what I want to be. Or watch it online is good too. So quickly, I'm going to share this and I'm going to pray for you because I know that God wants to anoint your eyes today to be able to see so that you can pray, to be able to see so that you can come to God, so you'll be able to see what's coming. You'll be able to know what's coming. You'll be able to see. You say, I'm not a seer prophet. Doesn't matter. You can be a seer prayer. How's that? I'll be a seer prayer. I'll be a seer prayer. I'll be a seer prayer. I'm going to see. I'm going to taste and see that the Lord is good. I'm going to taste and see that the list all in the Bible. That's why if you drink from the river, if you drink from the river long enough, you start seeing in the spirit because you're tasting. And eventually you start seeing that the Lord is what? Good. I would have fainted had I not believed that I would see the what? Goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Isn't that awesome? And so... So I, I, when I was 14, God told me he'd, he'd anointed me and uh, given me a staff. And, I, and, and it was years later. I was probably in my 40s. He said, I'm giving you a staff. I said, I don't have anybody working for me. I said, he says, not that kind of staff, like a staff, like thy rod and thy like, oh, that kind of a staff. And I, I literally thought for a few days, maybe I carry a hockey stick around because in Canada, that would be pretty good staff. You know, Bishop Charlie Robinson with his hockey stick, you know you know, cross check somebody if they're doing, I don't know, but I thought that, but I thought, no, probably not. And I said, when did you give me a staff? He said, when you were 14. I said, I wasn't even saved. He said, I gave it to you anyway. So when I was 14, I was in this church, old line church. Uh, it had a stone floor, a slate floor. It had a round turret for a pulpit. pulpit. It was huge stained glass windows. And, uh, they made me the altar boy. So I'm the altar boy for a whole month, preparing me for the bishop. So the bishop uh, Montreal came in a month later. So I'm in my robe and he comes in. And if you've never seen a bishop, God bless bishops, by the way, right? I think the word bishops in King James, you bishop. But this bishop looked like he stepped off the chessboard and he really did. He looked like he just came right off the chessboard. He had the big, just, I never seen a bishop, right? So I was pretty impressed. And he was a big guy and he had this big, you know, the hat comes up like this and he had the flowing robe. I mean, I had a son of a, and it was pretty pathetic. I just had him. He comes in and he, he's got the, he's got the staff and the flowing robes are red and white and the big thing. He looked about eight feet tall with it. He probably was with the thing. And he comes in and he's the bishop and I'm the pawn. And so, so he says, son, this is the oldest staff in North America, uh, oldest Christian religious symbol in North America, in North America. Do you know that Quebec City is the first established city in North America, Quebec City, still has a wall around it. So I'm from Quebec, not from Quebec City, but from Quebec. And so the Bishop of uh, Canterbury had given this to the Bishop of Montreal in 1850 something. And so it's 297 years old. And I'm thinking, you're gonna give it to me? Yeah, sure. And I had, to, I had to take it. He did his thing, I took it. I stood there, he took it. And then and I tried to look holy. And then, and then he would do his thing and then he started hobnobbing. So I, yeah, at the end, and so I put it against the pulpit, which was a turret, and I took one step away and I heard snap, like somebody, like a bull whip. And I looked and there was two staffs it, it was like two big, long toothpicks. It split right in the middle. And I thought, oh, man, that's uh, not good. And, of course, the bishop wasn't happy, but he's a bishop. He can't yell. But his face turned red and his lips turned white. He just went. And I'm thinking, oh, man, I'm in trouble. But my brother, younger brother, Brian, came over. Thank God, just the right time. I said, Brian, what did you do? So everybody looked at him, and that was my last day of work, wearing a robe. Till I get to heaven, I won't have that white robe, I don't think, anymore. I think I'm done with the robe. And if you wear a robe, don't be offended. Just have a double today. Just keep turning. So, so robes are, are good. You know, 
And if you carry a staff, God bless your staff. So anyway, they retired that one on its 300th anniversary. My dad phoned me up. The new one was made of aluminum. And when they went, literally, and when they, when they, when they retired the three, because they had glued it together, it's right, it's in St. I think it's uh, uh, St. Matthew's, I think downtown Montreal. It's in a bulletproof case. And when they got the new one, the, the bulletproof gate glued it together. And he says, they're not going to break this one. That's what he, I saw him on the news. They're not gonna, I said, too late, already broken. So that's what God gave me. God gave me a staff. So sometimes when God gives you a staff, you know, you, the authority that you carry will break something else. You see? But it'll also bless. You see? It be, you know, it'll bless. The, behold the, severity, the goodness and severity of God. You know, you want to be on the right side of the glory of God. Well, you, you know why? Remember when the angel came between Egypt and Israel? It was darkness on one side, but light to the, to, to the Israelites. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Let's stand up today because I believe that God, you know, the Bible even talks about, the, you know, the light, uh, your eyes, and, and enlightening your eyes, enlightening the eyes of your understanding. You know, Ephesians 1, 17, that God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, would give to you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened or being open. God, I pray today, you know, with every revival comes a spirit of revelation, a spirit of revelation, a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Father, I pray you open the eyes of our understanding. I'm talking about the eyes of your understanding, that we would be able to see, that we'd be able to know, that we'd be able to see what's coming ahead. Like I see the angels. I did, you know, earlier I didn't see them. They're standing here and they're big ones, and the, but they're here to protect something that God is about to birth. I see birthing angels. I see revival angels. I see the cry uh, uh, of your hearts that God is about to release something. He's about to birth something. But at the same time, there's a responsibility to take care of the baby. Somebody's got to take care of the baby. Somebody has to take care of revival. God, God, it's God's baby, but he gives it to somebody to take care of. And so, Father, we just pray you'd open our eyes so we might be able to see. And, Father, we might have 360-degree sight that we'd be able to see, we'd be able to know, we'd be able to do, and we'd be able to fulfill right to the last drop what you've called us. I pray, Lord, that the spirit of revival would come and it would come upon this group. It would come upon this meeting today. It would come. Lord, anoint our eyes. Put your hand in your eyes. Come on. Lord, anoint our eyes, Lord, today that we might see. I thank you that as you open our eyes, Lord, you blind the eyes of the enemy. And I thank you, Father, there is a new thing that you're doing right now. Behold, you're doing a new thing. And so, Lord, fill us all. Let's take a drink. Lord, we take a drink by faith from the river. Revelation 22, verse 1. And Revelation 22, verse 17. It says, well, the spirit of the bride say, come. And let him who, oh, man, if this doesn't offend you, you're doing good. And let him who comes to others take freely from the water of life. And everybody said, Amen. woo, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Come on. That's good. Let's give him a hand. Right before, uh, right before you leave, I, I feel like I'm getting a word for you. But before you do, Layla, just take another drink. Just take another drink. Just receive what God has for you. Isn't that a good word? Let's honor the prophet. Come on, let's honor the man of God. Uh, thank you, Lord. I, there's something that I absolutely love about, uh, love about our church. I think it's just amazing that we get more prophets in here in one month than most people do in a year. I just think it's awesome. So Robert, Patricia, the, all your friends, thank you so much. Um, and so it's just an honor to have you, and thank you so much for being here. Mark, also thank you for being here today to lead worship in our house and, and just bless us with it. I know we got another party tonight. It's going to be amazing. We're all coming to experience now, right? Yeah. We're all coming to experience now. We're going to come and experience the presence of God. But here's, uh, Charlie, here's what I just felt like the Lord was just... Um, was just sharing with me as you were preaching, and I actually got it during the 9 a.m. service, but I wanted to wait a little bit because I just want to, you know, marinate in that word a little bit, you know. <laughs> I heard the message, so I marinated a little bit. But I just feel like God was just showing me that there was, there's a territory that's on your heart. There's a territory. There's a, there's a place that's on your heart. And that God is saying that, is that, uh, that in the spirit, there has been walls that have put up because they're, they're actually like, they're not even welcoming prophets. They're like, they're not even welcoming the presence of God. Uh, but God is saying that he's giving you the ability to walk through walls. And then God says, stop looking for the door because I've given you the ability to walk through walls. And you've been asking God for the open door, but he says, son, let's just walk through the wall together. 
let's just walk to the wall together. And God is saying that if you'll just give him your yes, come on, that if you'll just go, Charlie, that he's saying, I'm gonna walk to the wall with you and there's no one that's gonna stop us. And I just hear God cheering you on and saying, come on, son, come on, son, come on, let's go. I am with you. We will go together. We will walk through the wall and revival will come to that land in the name of Jesus. Revival will come to the people. There is no wall that will stop the revival in the move of God in your life and what God has for you and the message that he is bringing to the people. So go in the name of Jesus. Wow. Man, that's good. That's a good word. Come on, man. Jesus loves you. So everybody's going to get up tonight at 10 p.m. and start praying. That's what I understood. I'm just kidding. Well, thank you so much for, for being here today. Isn't the Lord awesome? and what he does. Thank you, Father. Listen, there's going to be more prophetic flow. There's going to be more prophetic words. God is getting ready to just, I mean, even tonight, just thinking about the word that, that Katie's going to share. Come on. God is removing death's grip from your life. The, the enemy will not have any grip over your life in anything. I mean, come on. Thank you, Jesus. God is moving. There's so much happening. This is, this is a word. He's taking it to the nations. He's taking it to the nations. He's taking the gospel to the nations, you know. And one of the things that I love about, uh, another thing that I love about our church, I love everything about our church, but here's another thing that I love about our church is that we're called to the nations. We are a church that's called to the nations. We're, we're not just here. I mean, I know we're here. Yeah, come on. God gave us a home. We're here. But God has called us into the nations. And I'm so grateful that God has given us this, this, this view where, where, where we will not be stopped, you know. And, uh, you know, every, the, uh, this Sunday or today, you know, once a month, we, we want to we wanna, uh, receive an offering into the missions field, into the missions work and the things that God is doing uh, across the world, you know. And God, come on. I get excited. God is sending us into northern Iraq. Are you serious right now? Oh my God. Oh my God. This is amazing. This is amazing. There's unreached places of the world that God is sending his sons and daughters. He is sending those that say, I will go. This morning we sang a song that said, sign me up. I will go. And I want you to know there was angels in attendance. <laughs> Come on, God is getting to release in you. Some, and, and sometimes we think, well, how, how do we go into the mission field? Do you know that sometimes God will allow us to sow into a vision? That, that there's times when we can sow into a vision and let the money do the walking and talking. It's okay. Like there's, there, there's times when we, you will go, you will set foot. I am determined to set foot in northern Iraq. I'm determined to meet with brothers and sisters in Christ and build them up. We are determined as a church to release the voice of God, to release the, the glory of God in the nations. Wherever he'll send us, we'll take it. Wherever he'll, it started like this with Cambodia. Patricia looked at Cambodia and she, he gave us this tiny little place and they went and they got into this tiny little room and just started praying and look at us now. Look at the work of God now. All because some people got into a room and said, sign me up, Lord, we will go. And they showed up and he began to pray. And what we're, what we're doing today, right now, at this moment, we're going to worship the Lord with a missions offering to go into the nations. Because we will. It's like every tongue, every tribe, and every nation will know that Jesus Christ is Lord. We are not holding back, church. Amen. So what we're going to do now, it's a free will offering. It's a total free will offering. We want you to do this from your heart. Let this be a moment where you just even ask the Holy Spirit to highlight what he would have you sow into the mission's work today. Patricia gave a report earlier that a lot of the things that, uh, that Andrew was raising funds for to go is, has been reached. Thank you, Lord. But don't you know that there's another nation on our heart? Come on. God is going to give us more. Well, we want more, more. We have a Shiloh church in Cambodia. We want more. We want two or three of them by the end of the year. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We want to send teams of people into the nations to begin to train. How, can you imagine Russell teaching people how to pray in another land where well, they're all together smacking the ground and just declaring that this ground will not be fallow anymore? But the, I mean, just can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine Patricia going into the nations, continuing to go into the nations and preaching the gospel? Can you see, Robert? Can you see yourself? Can you see yourself? Because God wants to use you. He wants to send you. So today we're going to pour out before the Lord. We're going to pour out. Yes, ma'am, please do. I just uh, heard this testimony from Ben because uh, Christy was over in Cambodia and she just got back at 3 o'clock in the morning this morning. Um, but uh, he was sharing a testimony that she had shared with him. Um, a, a few years ago, uh, there was a, a, a boy over in Poipet, Cambodia, that had been... Um, 
really messed up. His his parents were were gone. He had been trafficked and everything, and uh, so they were working it through. And somehow he got lost. They couldn't find him anywhere, and so they've been praying and believing God for him to be found. So they were in Poipat this last week, and there he was. They found him, and it, he was a few years. Um, late, later in life, of course, but he had been taken into drug scene, into trafficking, all of that. They were able to get him completely out of that and getting him the help that he needs. And this is just hot off the press. This happened last week. And that's what we are doing. Christy was out there on the ground with Andrea and, and, and others, and that was just one testimony of what God is doing. It's significant. That is significant. Thank you, Jesus. Let's praise him for that. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Wow, that blesses my heart so much. Look at that. Look at that, church. Because we went, because we sowed, because we said, yes, Lord, because we signed up, because we said, send us, God. Look at that. A boy who needed hope was saved. Thank you, Jesus. That is worth the offering. That is worth receiving this together and lifting it up to Jesus. Listen, if you need an envelope, raise your hand, and uh, the ushers will hand you one. Uh, there's obviously that we have our five ways to sow, and you can even sow through, uh, you know, to, if you text C to 73256, you can sow now. For those of you that are online, you can, you can sow right now. Uh, you can sow to shilohfellowship.com. Uh, you can sow even if uh, right there, there's a, there's a donate button right there on your screen. Uh, you can hit that and it'll lead you to a safe site where you can begin to sow and just ask the Lord would he would have you pour out and pour it out because you're sowing into your future and you're sowing into those that would hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in fact, even right now, let's pray for multiplication on the seed that we're sowing today, that it would do more than it's ever, than whatever we could think is possible. Come on, that God, this is a supernatural offering. It's a supernatural missions offering. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we call this seed, Lord, to grow, to go out into the nation. Father, and to grow beyond our wildest expectations, Father, beyond our wildest imagination. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we bless this, 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 uh, this uh, free will offering right now into the missions field, God. And we say, yes, Lord. We say, thank you, God. We say, thank you that your, that your son is being made uh, known in all places, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So ushers, would you please serve the people in the receiving of the missions offering uh, from Shiloh Fellowship? Well, I'm so excited about what God is doing. We're having a good time, amen? amen. Listen, I, I'd like to tell you that I want you to look up at the screen and see the awesome video announcements, but we didn't record them this week. But we did because we were having so much fun in the glory and doing all kinds of stuff that we didn't have a chance to. But of course, grab a bulletin on the way out because there's some really important things happening. Here's the first thing we want you to know, that if it's your first time here at Shiloh, we want to say thank you so much for spending time with us, for getting to know us, for taking time out of your day to come and have church with us. And we're so grateful. Welcome to our family. You are so a part of it. And uh, we want to, in fact, we want to say hi to you and meet with you. We have a free gift for you. And if you would join us in the red room that's across the hall from the restrooms just after after the service, we want to just pray for you, pray blessing over you, and we have a free gift called uh, The Good Life. It's a book written by Patricia King. She has, I think it's over 100 books now that you, that you have written. Yeah, and so double portion in the name of Jesus. That's a long life. Yeah, it takes a long time to write 100 books. So uh, we speak double portion over you in Jesus' name, but we, uh, The Good Life, it's such a great book. It is a book that's going to minister to you and speak to you. You can have The Good Life now. We want to honor you with that book. If you're watching for your f first time online, hit us up, email uh, us at info at shilohfellowship.com, and we will connect with you. But if it's your first time here, would you please raise your hand, and our wonderful Mary and Russell pastors, Mary and Russell, are going to uh, hand you a blue card. Would you, uh, yeah, keep your hands up high. Would you fill that out, and we want to join, join us again, we want to join with you and join us in the Red Room just after the service. That's a tongue twister. Boy, it is a tongue twister. But we are so excited that you're here today, and thank you so much for coming to church with us. So announcements are going to be real easy. Grab a bulletin. Grab the bulletin, man. We got some good stuff popping off. Uh, Rita Ann, would you stand up really quick? How many of you know Pastor Rita Ann right here? Awesome, awesome. This week at her house, Shiloh Seniors Connect, I went to one. Future, go ahead and have a seat. A uh, future planning. I was, I went. I had an amazing time. Check this out. I was, I've been praying now for a while, uh, for a healing in my lungs. And I've been believing the Lord for it. Man, I have been struggling with my lungs. And I went, and many of you have prayed, and I want to thank you. I've gotten words. I'm hanging on to them. I went there. They prayed for me to sleep. I have not stopped sleeping. <laughs> I have not stopped sleeping. So now I need you to pray for energy. 
But I have slept good over the last two weeks, so I wanted to give you that report. So thank you, seniors, uh, for praying. God is moving. Listen, there's answers to miracles. They're, I mean, there's like, they're just getting blasted. They're having an awesome time. And I wanted to go to support because I also wanted to see what's going on. They are, I, I, there's no other way to say it. I think they're going to start levitating soon. I'm just, they are so supernatural. It's amazing. So go, if you're 55 or better, uh, come and connect. And I, I know I'm being lighthearted, but I'm being serious. God is moving on our seniors. Come on, these are your golden years. Get in it. Get in it. It is not a time to stop. You know what we say here? We don't retire, we refire. All right? So let's go for it in the name of Jesus. Also, another thing that's happening today, and this will be my last announcement, is men of Shiloh. Yeah. Yeah. Men of Shiloh. I have to add my own sound effects because we don't have that ability in the back, but that was fun. So men of Shiloh, we want to meet you in the annex or we hear the, uh, I'm prophesying our annex building. It's our, it's our double wide trailer right now, but it's soon to be an annex uh, for the children's ministry. Come on, we're going to pray that in. But, uh, but it's a great place to meet. And you know, the men of Shiloh are the guest speakers at Shiloh. And we always come together to hear the heart of the Lord, but we also, it's a place for you to share your heart also. And so it's a great time to connect with the men and we got a breakfast coming up soon all these good things but God is moving on the men at Shiloh amen and God is moving on the women at Shiloh and God is moving at the kids at Shiloh I mean God is moving on our church so get ready hold on to your seats it's not just uh, us you know doing a happy dance like God is showing us stuff for the church and it's going to be an amazing ride so thank you Lord uh, for your glory so uh, that book is for sale by the way uh, accessing Patricia's new one accessing the riches of heaven of heaven uh, or of having, but of heaven, this book is on sale after the service. Uh, they got it up. So if you want to grab this uh, before tonight, you can go ahead and, and grab a copy. Uh, $12. Is that right? $12. Get one for yourself and get one for a friend and bless someone. Don't just get one for you. Get one to impart and to sow into someone else too. God bless you. Are you guys having a good time? Good. Who's still in the glory? Are you going to keep it going until tonight? Yes, we are. Who's going to pray after service? Yeah, come on. He said, if you keep praying, something good's going to happen. So we're just staying prayer. You know, you can pray and eat at the same time. Yes, you can. In the name of Jesus. Well, okay. So let's, let's get going here. Patricia, is there anything else you want to announce before we go? Oh yeah. Altar team, come on up. Uh, we have an amazing altar team. These folks would love, absolutely love to pray for you today. So uh, if there's any concerns, any needs on your heart, anything that you uh, just, just, maybe you need a healing. Maybe God is, you've been asking God for healing. Today is the day. Pick up your mat and walk, man. Today is the day. I'm decreeing it now. In the name of Jesus, you will have your healing. You will, it's like, come on, let's just come on up. Come on, do not leave here today without, uh, without receiving prayer for an area of need in your life. Thank you so much. Yeah, come on up. Yeah, you ready for prayer? He's ready. Come on, let's do this. Man, he answered the call. This man is paying attention. This man, in the name of Jesus, he, is, he wants Jesus. So thank you, Lord. You never know what's going to happen when people are approaching the pulpit. He just wants prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Heavenly Father, we seal this time. We thank you, Lord, for this, for this time, Father. We thank you for the word of the prophet, God. We thank you that tonight, God, it's another opportunity for us to come together, Lord, and to be with you, God. And we thank you, Lord, that you're gonna move across the people. You're gonna move online, Father. You're gonna move in the house, Father. We thank you, Lord, that even now you're preparing us for tonight. You're preparing our hearts for tonight, Father. We thank you that this is a season where we will see with our eyes, Father, all that you are doing in Jesus' name. We step into this word, we receive this word, and we activate this word right now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Before we go, remember this. God loves you with an everlasting love. He really, really does. We'll see you later tonight for Experience Night. God bless you. You are dismissed. God loves you with such a beautiful, strong, amazing love, and He's after your heart. He wants you to know every part of Him because He made every part of you, and He loves every part of you. And I believe there may have been a question in your mind whether or not God is really and truly good. And I'm here today to tell you that He is a God that is so good, and He is so loving, and He wants you to come into the fullness of that knowledge and that experience with Him. And if you feel that tugging, inside of you and you feel like, oh gosh, I, I want to know, I want to know that's true, then I will invite you to repeat a prayer after me to invite Jesus into your heart. So repeat after me. Jesus, I pray that you would just come into my, my life, come into my heart, and that you would just wash away every sin and everything that has separated me from you. 
I pray that you would just come in and turn my life around. I give my life to you. Thank you, Jesus. If this was your first time praying this prayer, we would love to hear from you. Please email us at info at shilohfellowship.com. We have a free gift for you, a book called The Good Life. It's full of insight and revelation to help get you started on this new walk with the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, God loves you with an everlasting love. He really, really does.